and welcome to Undercover and welcome to Niagara. Good to have you down here. Nice that you came down. Look at all of this work of yours around the walls here. This is amazing. How does it feel standing in a room Damn and good. seeing your life? Uh, yeah, it's ama what's funny is seeing it all together. When I paint, it doesn't like magically form like this, but it's like, God, I use a lot of color. It's, it's shocking. It always looks very nice how it's arranged. Yeah. My life, I hope, this is the extent of my life right here. <laughs> That's well, it. Uh, it must certainly feel like that. And I mean, you, you've gone into a new direction with the new artwork. You're doing a lot of the older classic movie stars at the moment. Yeah, you know, it looks like I did a lot of work when I see one at a time. It looks like I'm working a lot. Lately I'm doing um, more of from literature I read, the women talking with film noir, the golden years of Hollywood, where they knew how to make movies. I just watch the old movies, read books about expats that go to Europe. It's like 1900s or earlier. To 1940s, and I'm hung up on that area, that era. As I'm reading like Cole Porter now, I finished the Chanel book. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm hung up, and it just is nice, nice return to the past because I hate it now. <laughs> because there's so many fucking people. I mean, there's so many fucking people. Next question. So you don't plan on doing the entire history of film, then? I take it. I, well, there's uh, so many gorgeous pictures taken taking back then of actresses that they can't seem to do now. They can't replicate the, the cinematography. And the women back then, and the men, and they worked harder in a way. I mean, now it's like then you turn to blue jeans, and there was a, there was an aura that, was, that will always be revered, that will not be from then on. And, uh, yeah, what, what was their question? <laughs> well, let's get on to another question then. I mean, you've got a sort of a, like, not so much a split personality, but a split career in both the art and the music. Where do you draw the line? When do you stop at one and get to work on the it's, other? It's that damn Gemini moon that I have. That's what my astrologer said. I'd never just do one thing. And I was like, I just want to do one thing. And then I have been painting so long, and I was in a band so long, but recently I realized that I was in my room for maybe a decade, you know, just happily painting, it's snowing, I'm stuck there, it's all going well, I'm playing music, you know, on the radio when I paint, and I'm going, I forgot how to talk to people, <laughs> I, I'm right, I can't even, I haven't gone out, so, I mean, I love the, with the band, with the guys in the band, I love talking to them. I mean, it's a whole nother world, and you can imagine, and that's what I, I think I miss. So just suddenly, this, suddenly last summer, now I decided to uh, to come back. Even last year I didn't want to, but it, it suddenly made sense, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm planning to enjoy it. I always plan to not enjoy something and get it over with fast because I'm messed up like everybody. But I'm I'm going to enjoy this. How did, how did the connection with the Hitman come about? Well, I guess we knew Johnny from booking a gig with Dark Carnival in the 90s, in the 90s, and he was a great guy. To he put it together a beautiful tour. I was with Ronnie then, and Ronnie loved it here. And we had, that was our funnest tour that we did in the whole world. It was wonderful. And then when he suggested it again, and things would come together, I totally trust him. That was his band. They're brilliant. And I'm, I'm a sucker for a lead guitarist, and Chris Maslick, and I mean everyone in this band. Because we had our first practice today, and I was uptight about, oh God, you know, nobody likes practice. Every time. Every time practice is called up, you go, it's called up, we're free, it's canceled. Canceled is like, you know, Ronnie and I would live on that. But it wasn't. We had practice and it was great. It was, you know, those guys are so smart and it started off rough and then every note. And those guys are brilliant. I'm just so thankful. Who knows what will happen live? It might be a mess, but that's not the point, right? That's not the point. What about uh, going back going back to the history of the Ashtons and when you were working with the Ashtons way back when? Did it, it feel special that at the time? Long ago, was it? Yeah, but did it feel special at the time? Oh, absolutely. 
I mean, I, I was a, a horrible fan of the Stooges in Detroit, and I love Detroit, but the MC5, the Stooges, that was a, an era. I mean, that music, and I mean, that ruled my life, and I, I would like, I would, this was like a routine I'd have at night, just playing them on the headphones and, and smoking marijuana and trying to like eventually disappear into the music. I mean, it was crazy. Over and over I'd listen to these tunes and they were just, they, it was like a religion. And for a few people, actually a lot of people, you know, it wasn't like they had tons of fans back then. I'd go in the record store and say, you know, I'd want to buy a Stooges record when it was a little past, when you know it was sold out it was like in the early 70s and they would laugh at me they weren't like like guys like they are now it was a joke so it was very special meeting Ronnie and I'm like a guitar whore where I just I love the sound of a good guitar and his his leads are just they start like a story and it has this continuity it's hard to explain that others don't. I mean, even though James Williamson in the same band has his style, Ronnie had this sensitivity and this storyboard in his head that it almost seemed like the lead would go full circle and have like a beautiful, sensitive story. Anyway, uh, and it was hardcore at the same time. And we were very driven by it. Um, yeah. you, you get to tell your music in both... Uh I guess music and in artwork, so it's a lovely position to be in. I would imagine. Well, when I was little, I knew I couldn't do anything real. <laughs> I, I didn't tell anyone, but it was like, man, I know I'm screwed. Yeah. But what we're seeing on the wall, this is fantastic stuff, Niagara. It's great to have you here at Undercover. Which one are you buying? <laughs>